We're here with two week old Labradoodle puppies and this is their update video. Hi, I'm Claire from Van Nile Doodles and today we are going to tell you about each of the medium Labradoodle puppies in the litter from MJ and Copper and we're going to give you a little bit of an update on MJ herself and we're going to actually have a lot of information to share with you today because we missed the week one update. So first of all, let's get started with MJ. MJ is doing really well. She is such a devoted and caring mom. She's really, really quite remarkable. For a girl who's just having her first litter, she's really taking to motherhood just very, very nicely. She's always attentive to her babies. She's always happy to do whatever she needs to do to make sure everyone has full access to her milk bar. And while she is already going outside and she's running around a bit, she's anxious to get back to them in fairly short order. And MJ's appetite is amazing. She is not one of the girls that we have to hand feed. She's doing really well eating all on her own. And she's currently eating about six pounds of raw and about two, two to three cups of the special formula we have for our moms that are lactating. So she's not lacking in calories. But when you have 11 Labradoodle puppies to feed, that's a lot of Labradoodles to look after. And we live on Vancouver Island and we get a lot of rain on Vancouver Island and we have had some rainy days lately. So when MJ goes outside to play and then she comes in, she's forever traipsing in all of this dirt and mud. So we also have lots of laundry from MJ because we do have to change the bed out fairly frequently. So as you know, last week we didn't do a one week video and the reason for that was because the puppies were not feeling well. They all had a bit of puppy diarrhea. Now this is not something that's uncommon with puppies. This does happen and it was just from worms. So all mama dogs, all female dogs actually are born with a dormant worm and the worm doesn't come to life until the girl gets pregnant and then it starts doing its wormy thing. Uh, so these little puppies all were impacted by that and not feeling well. So rather than disturbing them, we let them all be there and recover. They all lost weight while they were ill and that's always a very critical thing with a young puppy. Uh, we cranked the temperature way up. We uh, got MJ and the puppies all wormed and we gave them all some probiotics and within well, within 24 hours, there was an improvement. Within 48 hours, we definitely saw quite a big improvement. And we have a couple of special items that we use uh, in our little uh, hospital pharmacy. They're not uh, drugs or anything, but we have one special drop that we use. So if the puppies are too weak to nurse, which some of them were, it's called Nutri, Nutri Drops and it's molasses and sugar and electrolytes. It's basically just a little mini energy boost. So if they're not eating, you can give them just a drop of this. I actually just swab the eyedropper inside their mouths when they're this tiny and that gives them lots of sustenance and, and enough energy and enough uh, balance in their electrolytes to get through. And then we also sometimes give them plain old normal um, gripe water that children have. And we were fortunate that none of them became dehydrated and they were all able to nurse quite soon after. Now, as you'll see today, MJ is doing quite a bit of panting while we're here doing this video. And the reason for that is because we have Austin and her litter in the studio. And we have the temperature up still really quite high for Austin as her babies are just uh, four days old now. So it's 25 degrees in here and MJ is used to having her room turned down now to 21 degrees. So this is a, a lot of heat for her. And both MJ and I have our COVID haircuts going on where we have way more hair than we normally do. It doesn't make me that much hotter, but it certainly makes MJ a lot hotter. So uh, she'll, I know, be really excited when finally the puppies are able to stay on their own for long enough that she can go and get her hair done. She'll feel all great in a brand new fresh dress that's much shorter than this one. 
So now the puppies are all fine. Um, the fact that they were sick has no permanent impact on them whatsoever. It's, uh, as I said, something that's not uncommon. It's just really stressful if you're the breeder. Uh, so we were weighing them every two hours. We were monitoring them uh, every two hours, 24 hours a day to make sure that if they were losing weight, we made sure that we were giving them the nutri drops and we were checking to make sure they weren't dehydrated. Dehydration and being cold are the two biggest problems you face in those circumstances. So like I said, we cranked the heat way up uh, because the puppies were all wet because they had diarrhea. They would go to the bathroom on top of one another and they would become, their bums would be soaking wet. So they were, it was really easy for them to get chilled. So that's why we cranked the temperature up so much. So we'll go through each of the puppies now because we've got lots of news on each of them and we'll do it in birth order and we're going to start with light blue collar. Now with this litter because there's so many it takes me a little while sometimes to find them and I also don't like to disturb MJ too much and she wouldn't let me anyways because she's quite protective of her puppies and quite bossy about the whole thing. So this is Mr. Light Blue Collar here. Come here sweetheart. Now, Mr. Light Blue Collar is a chocolate, and look, his eyes are open. Yes, that is the major milestone for most of these puppies this week. They can see, well, they can't really see, but their eyes are open, so they can see some shapes and some blobs, but they can't really recognize anything too much yet. No, but it's so great. When they open their eyes, it's like, oh, you're real uh, and Mr. Light Blue Collar as the firstborn is also the biggest puppy in the litter and I'm really excited that all of them have doubled their birth weight except for one who's just a couple of grams short but everyone else has at least doubled their birth weight and most of them more than doubled and to accomplish that in the first two weeks is always the ultimate goal so clearly when they lost weight and were not feeling well had no impact on them that was lasting so Mr. Light Blue Collar, he is now up to 596 grams. So he's really coming along nicely in his weight department. And you'll see his coloring has changed a little bit since we did the birth announcement video. He's more of a mahogany color now as opposed to um, a chocolate. And that's because he's got some of that sable influence from mom there. So he's a beautiful boy. He is. He's just doing great. And he's got that adorable little white goatee which really sets off his beautiful brown coloring. That's a boy. So that's Mr. Light Blue Collar. There you go, MJ. And you'll see she's very enthusiastic about kissing them and cleaning them when I give them back. Make sure I haven't done anything wrong. The next puppy is Brown Collar. And Brown Collar, I think, is, is that you? Yeah. This is Brown Collar here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. And Brown Collar is a caramel party. And she is, I believe, a girl. Yes, she is. And she too has those beautiful peepers there for to show off to you. Hey, look at those pretty eyes. Now you can see really readily in brown collar girl that her eyes are blue. And puppies' eyes are all blue when they're born. They will not stay blue. Labradoodles do not have blue eyes. Uh, these girls, or these puppies rather, will have mostly, uh, they'll either have chocolate eyes or they'll have hazel eyes. The ones that are more red and light colored, like little brown collar here, their eyes will uh, turn to a hazel color. You occasionally see green eyes in a labradoodle, but that is uh, something that's quite unusual. So brown collar girl, she's at 584 grams. So she's also doing very nicely with her weight gain. Oh my goodness. And she has a little tiny voice that she's using. She's quite a quiet little girl. But you can hear her doing her little <laughs> and you can see her pretty markings on her back, back here and on her tail. And we'll just put her back down because she's had enough of that. Thank you very much. She says, I was eating and now I'm up in the air. The next one we have is Purple Collar. Purpy Purpy, where are you? Here's Purple Collar. Hello. And Purple Collar is a nice caramel. And Purple is a boy. And purple is sort of a gold caramel color and he is showing you his eyes as well. So this little puppy has lots of really pretty white markings on him. You'll see he has lots of white on his chest, under his chin. 
He's got white on top of his head and I think he might even have a smidge of white going up his nose a little bit. He's got some uh, white on his toes as well, which you can see here. He's got those little dippy toes and a little bit lighter color even down there. You can hear Austin's puppies crying for her. Austin just stepped out of the box, so somebody was not pleased at uh, Austin's decision to do that. So right now we have the, um, the, the four litters, and so the house is really full. So we have everything has to be double duty. So uh, we get lots of sounds all the time. Austin's just going back in to see now what her baby's up to. So Miss, Mr. Rather, purple collar is 551 grams. So another very good gainer. Yes, good job. Really good job. Next we have orange collar. Here's orange collar. Yay, right near the beginning here. Orange collar is also a boy. And orange collar is a little bit of a darker brown. And he too has his eyes wide open. He is darker than uh, light blue, as you can see. There's less of the mahogany kind of coloring in him there. He has a really, really nice, rich color of coat. He looks like something I would enjoy eating from Purdy's Chocolates. Yeah, maybe we should call you Purdy as your nickname. This is a very quiet little puppy, very quiet. And orange collar is 532 grams. So again, more than uh, doubled his birth weight and uh, having a really good weight gain and just doing really well. You can see even as he sits here, he's much quieter than um, brown or uh, purple collar girl who was sort of squirming around there. Or purple collar boy, sorry. Generally purples are girls, that's why I keep saying purple collar girl. Oh, now MJ, you're in the most awkward spot. I can't even see them all. Oh my goodness me. Next is a black collar. And she is one of the parties. And I think this is you right here, isn't it? Come here, baby girl. No, that's yellow. Oh, maybe I got remembered wrong. Who's this over here? There's black collar. Yes. Come on, little girl. Yes. There. Little black collar has her eyes open as well, but she's not gonna show them to you very much because she was sleeping. And little black collar, she had the hardest time when everyone was sick. She was the most sick out of everybody. She lost a lot of weight and uh, she, she really worried me for a little while that uh, we, I wasn't too sure if she was gonna be there when I came back every two hours, if she would be okay or not. But she's a champ, she's a real fighter, and she got through it all without any problems. And she is up to 420 grams. And just to give you an idea, uh, just five days ago, she only weighed 276 grams. So she's really, really doing well. And that's great because she is a tiny little one. She's not the smallest by any means, but uh, she would be, she is the second smallest in the litter. Uh, green collar is the smallest, but she's the second smallest. And she's a caramel party. And you can see she has all sorts of gorgeous markings on her back. And if you'll remember from um, the birth announcement video, or if you go back and take a look at it again, uh, you'll see that her markings have really come in much darker now. You couldn't see all of the color on her anywhere near as easily as you can now. So that's what happens with these little caramel parties. They tend to darken up and, and they're just beautiful as they mature. And then we'll put this little sleepy head right back there because she sure is a tired puppy. My goodness me. We just put her right down. <laughs> She's just, oh, whatever you say, I'll just sleep here. Uh, next is gray collar. And gray collar, where are you? Nope, you're blue. Here's gray collar here. Come here, sweet babe. Oh my goodness me, another one who's getting their sleep disturbed. Gray collar is a boy. Whoopsie. <laughs> this way. There we go. Oh my goodness, what? I'm awake? Oh, I was having such a good sleep. Gray collar's eyes are open too. And he has all sorts of really pretty markings. So he is a red and white abstract. And when I call them red, oh, there we go. Careful. Careful, baby. They're all red caramels. To be a red Labradoodle, your nose must be black. 
these puppies do not have black noses. They're going to have brown noses. So I think anyways, this one, his pads are black. So he may, he may trick me. He may end up being a red. I can't quite tell what color his nose is right now. It looks out almost actually like it might be black. So maybe he will be a true red as opposed to a red caramel. Does it make a difference to you? To you? No, that's just uh, how the, the dogs are defined in the breed standard. Uh, the color will look the same to your eyes, but it's just the breed standard requires that if you are an actual red Labradoodle, then you have a black nose and black pads. And this puppy does clearly have black pads, so maybe that nose is gonna fill in as a black and he's gonna be a pretty black boy. His uh, his dad and his mom, sorry, losing track of who, <laughs> both have uh, brown noses, but they do both carry for black, so it's possible. But you'll see he has lots and lots of white markings here, all under his chin, on his chest. He's got white on the top of his head, and he's got, I think you've got white on your face, if I remember, if you let me see your face. Yes, up on his nose there on the side of his face. He got pretty white markings. He's a very beautiful boy, aren't you? Oh, yes. And we have, oh, no, no white toes. Nope, we just have all of our white around our face and our chest. Because we're such a handsome boy, aren't we? And the gray color boy weighs 550 grams. So he's really pretty much in the center there of everybody. Pretty good weight. And we're also doing our early neurological work with the puppies now. We didn't do it when they weren't feeling well. So we just started getting back into the habit of that again. And that's something as simple as just putting them upside down like that for just a moment. And you can see that that's something he doesn't expect to have happened. Now, normally at two weeks, they're quite accustomed to us doing that, but because they didn't feel well, they're one week behind on doing that, but they'll get caught up in no time. So that's our handsome gray collar boy. We'll put him over there with the parties. See if he wants to party with them. Now dark blue collar. I think that's you, isn't it, over here? Are you dark blue? Yes, you are. Come here. Oh, I'm so sorry. Everybody's just so tired. Oh my goodness, it's our nap time. Dark blue is a little girl, right? Yes, you are. And she is a caramel. And she has lots of pretty white on her too. And you can see there's quite a bit of difference in her color from um, gray color. So she's more of a sort of a goldy, almost beigey caramel kind of color. Not as much of the red in her. Uh, more, more of a sort of a blondy caramel, like a toffee kind of color. Really pretty little girl. And she has all of these pretty white markings on her too including on her chest and she has white on all four of her feet and she has white a white chin and she has white on her nose and then she has a little tiny dab of white on the top of her head so this is a really very prettily marked little girl as well you can see she's not too comfortable with the idea of me showing her to you right now so i'm going to take advantage of the fact that she's already a little bit uncomfortable and i'll just do her upside down thing for the few seconds there and you can see she relaxed right away into that well not really relaxed but she certainly wasn't fussing about it that's a good girl and blue is 637 grams. So she's a really good weight. She's up near the top of the scale. Hey, there's your mama, MJ. Oh, so going to give you a kiss, make sure I haven't done anything wrong. MJ, like I said, she's very, very attentive to the babies. She's always making sure everything's all right. Every time after I touch them, they get a complete going over, just in case she's, I've done something wrong or put something on them I ought not to. Hey, there's a good girl, MJ, yes. Yes, you're a very good mom. You are. And after dark blue, we have red collar. And red collar is hiding over here, I think. You are red collar. Here we go. Here is little red. Red is also a girl. And you can see again, she's a, a different shade yet again of the caramel. Again, she is a red caramel. I don't think she's a red dog. Let's just check her feet. Oh, maybe, because it looks like she might have black pads too. Yeah, so she may be a red girl as well. And she's uh, red and white again. So you can see she has the pretty white on her nose, under her chin, and she has a little bit of a bigger white spot on her head here. 
and she has oh I forgot to show all of you the little white tips on their tails uh, pretty much everyone has that they're so cute that's uh, courtesy of copper and then we have the four white toes or the three white toes I guess the back two definitely are white just a little hint here and nothing on this one here and then we have the white down the chest very pretty the, the markings that are on their chests are not very visible right now and especially not when I'm holding them uh, but as they get older you'll really see those those uh, that white coloring will really come up and uh, really set the red off prettily it is one of the nicest combinations well actually the the white tuxedo -y kind of style markings on any color is always quite stunning yeah oh that's a big yacht now did you show anybody your eyes Hey, oh no, the eyes look like they're not going to open to show anybody. They are opened, but she just isn't going to share them with you right now. She says, no, I'm not sharing. And Miss Red Collar is an even. There she goes. There they are. Now you can see them a little bit. She's an even 500 grams. So she's one of the tinier puppies. And when I'm holding them, it's easy for me to tell what their structure is like. She's a little bit of a lighter build, uh, whereas some of them may not necessarily be that much different in weight, but the, their build can make a huge difference in their appearance, whether they're a stockier type dog. If you look on our website, you'll see um, Ripple, and Ripple is a, a lighter build. And then if you look at Spirit, Spirit is a really stocky build. So that's what I mean by the difference between those two. Now we're going to find Yellow Collar. Yellow, you are. Where is Yellow? Yellow, yellow, yellow. Oh, here's yellow. The party puppy. I thought we had done all the parties. Oh, there we go, little baby. And yellow is a girl. Hi. And you're going to show everybody your pretty eyes? I bet you will. I know you were sound asleep. The little, little tiny glimpse at your pretty eyes. So yellow is also a caramel party. So she has the really nice symmetrical markings on her head there. And then if you look down her back, you'll see that she has beautiful spots down her back and then quite a big bunch of the caramel coloring on the base of her tail there. So these spots that you see on the parties, they look fairly small when they're little. As they get older, those will become more predominant. So if you look at Ripple in her pictures, you can see she has quite big amount of spots. And when she was a baby, they weren't anywhere near as obvious as they are now. The puppies have all had their claws done. I just did them uh, yeah, two days ago, but I can tell from them being here on me now that they're quite scratchy still. They don't leave a line on my skin. That's usually what uh, I look for to see how much they're hurting on my the back of my hand. And if it's really uncomfortable for me and I would go like this, then that's when I know that uh, yeah, MJ would be really appreciative if I give them another trim. They grow very fast. Yellow collar girl is 497 grams. So she's a nice weight too. A little bit down on the smaller end of the scale, but still a really good weight. And, and again, has more than doubled her birth weight. There we go, sweetheart. There you go. Now, next one is green collar. Green collar's hiding over here, also sound asleep. Um, maybe if um, you can see here, this puppy is a little bit wet. That's from uh, MJ washing. Uh, you can see though, the ripples in the fur. And then you can see in this puppy here, that this one is straighter. This one, this puppy and orange color, you can really see orange color is dry, but you can see there's already uh, like a good, like a rickrack zigzag waves on there. This is puppies, these are puppies who are gonna have more curl to their coat than this one here. This one's gonna be more of a wave and this one's gonna be more of an actual curl. So MJ is a wave and Copper is a curl. So if you look the two of them up under the Our Dog section on the website, then you'll uh, see what I mean by the difference. Uh, um, as I've said before, we bought Copper for his curls because it's really important to have that genetic diversity and not be trying to uh, lock yourself into, into uh, breeding for one particular look, such as a straight coat. Hello, hello. Well, Mr. Green, oh, I forgot to, I'm not positive here if you're a girl or a boy. So we just check and you are a girl 
and there we go on the upside down portion and you'll see that she has zero reaction to that and at the same time she can show off to you how all of her beautiful white chest under her chin there around her face and then she has the four dip toes that's a pretty little thing now maybe if she she might wake up after all of that and shows her eyes oh oh so my head's so heavy i can't hold it up right now oh no nope. too tired to show the eyes green collar is the smallest puppy in the litter and she's 375 grams she almost doubled her birth weight she's just a couple of grams shy of doubling it and she has the pretty little white tip on the end of her tail this is a sweet puppy. You can tell always that she's the tiniest. She's, she never ever argues with anyone and she's always so excited when she finds a spot at the milk bar. She usually goes for the front uh, because that's not as popular as the rear. And it's also easier for her because the flow is a little slower. Here, let's find you a good cozy spot. We put you in there. And let's find you a spot over here with everyone so you're not all by yourself. Yeah, nobody wants to be all by themselves. There we go, big bruiser. And then last but not least is Tan Collar Boy. Hey, buddy. Hi. Tan Collar is a really handsome chocolate phantom. And he's always a squirmer. He's a squirmer and he's a talker. He's, if the, anyone's going to complain about things, it's going to be Tan Collar Boy. He's all <laughs> like a little monkey. Yes, you sound like a monkey. I love my little monkey. So he's probably a sable and not a phantom, but it's uh, too early to tell. Right now he has all of the trademark markings of a phantom. Uh, although, because he doesn't really have... Here, let me look at you a little bit better here. Oh yeah, I know. I knew you would be the one who'd fuss about being upside down. Yeah, I know. The world's ended. He, he does have the markings across his chest, but they're not as strong as uh, normally in a phantom. There, now I got him all excited. You can see his eyes really pretty eyes but you can see on the side of his face he does have the coloring it's just not showing up really strongly so he could be a sable and he may be a phantom it is possible for mj and um, copper to produce a phantom together uh, that the odds are very low that they would but it is possible uh, but because MJ is a sable, sable is dominant over phantom. So normally if you have one of the, either the dem or the sire with sable, that usually is the gene that um, comes through that you'll end up seeing. So we just have to wait and see what little Mr. Talkative here has to say about what his coloring is going to be when he's all grown up. Lots of things still to wait for, whether they're reds or red caramels and whether we have sable or phantom. And tan color is 542 grams. So he is a really good weight. So that is all 11 of these kids. I'm just so happy to be able to tell everybody that they're doing so well and that they were able to double their birth weights. Like that's a really major accomplishment and that's all thanks to MJ. Uh, MJ's diet is um, based primarily on a raw dog food diet and um, Lots of people um, will say that raw is better and th there's not a lot of scientific evidence one way or the other. But the one thing that we do know is that the bioavailability in a raw food diet is more there for a dog than um, with a processed kibble diet. So when we feed her her raw food, all of the energy that's in that food and all the nutrients are more easy for her body to utilize, to access, absorb, and then give to the puppies. So anecdotally, I can say that we have definitely noticed a change in our puppies uh, since we started feeding our moms raw. Uh, the puppies are always healthier and they have better weights, better birth weights, uh, and they gain weight better too. So uh, overall, it seems to work really well for us and uh, is something that we really enjoy being able to offer to all of our dogs. So next week, the major milestone that these kids will perhaps reach is having their ears open. And that's always fun because when we come in to see the puppies, as we do, of course, throughout the day, the first time when we come in, somebody will go like this. And their head will lift up and uh, that's how we know that their ears have started to open. You can also see it as well because their ears are quite clearly sealed shut right now and uh, when they start to open that is clear that they have uh, a pathway down so they can hear us. And then once they can hear 
things change quite a bit. And that's when we get to start talking to them more. Well, probably not more, but they can respond to us talking to them is, is really what happens. Because as you know, I talk to them all the time, right from the time they're born, whether they can hear me or not. Um, but it's great. Then they start to respond and uh, really come to life, so to speak. So that'll be a big event if everybody has that uh, happen next week. Generally, the eyes all tend to open at the same time, but quite frequently the ears can be a few days difference in the in the puppies. So we'll wait and see how that uh, works out for next week. And uh, we'll have a much cooler studio for all of us because we'll be able to <laughs> turn the temperature down for Austin's babies by next week. So hope you enjoyed the video and this update. And thank you so much for being so patient and letting the puppies recover and uh, missing your week one update. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't had a chance already, please subscribe to the channel so you always know when our updates are coming. Uh, we've got four a week right now, that just for one more week and there'll be three a week. And there's always something a little different in each of the updates. So it's fun to watch them all and uh, hopefully you'll uh, gain some more knowledge and something that's interesting for you. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next week.